What's happening everybody? I've got one last 60 for you today. This of course is going to be the brand new deck we've been running, Strike Twice. This thing is fantastic. It started out as a War Storm Surge deck. It evolved from there into something pretty goddamn special. I enjoy this deck a lot. It's a shame that it didn't see play earlier on, but let's jump in here and show it to you so that you guys can run it for the last couple days we have of this particular meta before we're all figuring out. I think it's going to be probably pretty strong going into the early game uh, of the new meta as well. Even though we're going to want to be trying out new cards if you want to get in there and get some wins. Uh, I think this thing's a good way to go because it's a very strong deck. Let's hop down here and talk about what we're looking at. We've got 19 creatures, 18 other spells, 23 lands. We need a lot of lands here because we need to fish for them. We need to have them in our hands early game. It's, uh, it's a little janky what we're doing with the land, so we do need them there. We've got the color distribution of 14 white, 7 red, 16 green. And of course, that's not 100% accurate because, you know, this is 2 and this is 2. Uh, but that's a good idea of where we're at. We're really a white and green deck that splashes red for the surge and a couple of other necessities. And then you can see our mana curve is a little insane. We've got eight one drops, which is always nice to have. We've got the 11 two drops, seven three drops, three four drops, and eight six plus drops. We have a lot of mana ramping though, so don't be too worried about that. Speaking of mana, let's talk about the lands. The lands on here are pretty complex. We've got five planes, four mountains, five forests, two Selesnya guild gates, three Boros guild gates, and four Gruul guild gates. Now, of course, we have four Gruul guild gates because we're splashing that red. We don't need it all the time, but we definitely need green. So getting the red in there is a nice added bonus. The Boros guild gates are nice because they also couple our off color, which is the red that we have there. And then, of course, we have the Selesnya guild gate, which is the kind of the anchor and that's what bridges our two main colors together so we don't need as many of those now strictly speaking math wise you could take one mountain out of here and put in one more forest and i would not disagree with that at all to be honest with you the mountains are not super important and you're going to get a lot of them regardless of what's happening in your life they're going to show up i mean you have seven eight nine ten eleven sources of red so you have plenty uh, you could do that if you wanted to, if you were worried about getting those those greens on the field early, but I've never really had a problem with it. Every once in a while, you'll be missing like a third, which will be your uh, necessary amount for your Pelica Worm or what have you, but uh, generally, you'll be able to cultivate into what you need. You just have to plan ahead very well and know your deck and know that out of everything, you do have the least chance to get a red. And uh, that's pretty much the best advice I can give you here. The lands are a little bit complicated, but you just have to be mindful of what you cultivate for. Without further ado, let's give kind of a broad overview of this deck. You have a lot of big drops, but your early game is taut. It's a bow string ready to snap. This early game is insane. You got Mentor of the Meek doing card draw, working with Bremaz for your card draw. You've got the Seance, which is all kind of early game, working with your Wall of Omens, which is drawing you all sorts of cards, uh, which is working with this guy. So your early game is chock full. We've also got a couple of just early dudes to hang out there. And don't forget that that Seance is going to work wonders with your Warstorm Surge. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Another thing that's amazing with Warstorm Surge, of course, is Cloud Shift, especially when, it, when we have so many creatures with Enter the Battlefield effects. Hey, you want to take 6 damage? Is Storm Surge out? You want to take 12? Oh, but wait, do you want to just take 18? No, you don't! It's an insane amount of swing that you can get, not to mention the fact that Pelica Worm is going to be interacting with all this bullshit and just ruining people's days. Cloud Shift is an amazing card. We have four of them in here. It is going to be self-evident. If you've been watching the channel, that card is a necessity. Wall of Omens is our early game blocker. Maybe we are not as set up as we want to be. Plus, we can draw two cards off of him late game. And, of course, he'll wake up Vengevine, which also works with Warstorm Surge. This deck's synergies are off the charts. Where? What's the number down there? Fuck you. Zero synergy stars. What? This game is an idiot. This game doesn't know how to play itself. We have Bremaz. This dude is a tank of gas. I understand that. I didn't have him in originally because I didn't know that this is the direction I wanted to take this deck. Because I thought this was going to be like a fun goof deck. This is a serious kick the shit out of people deck. So Bremaz is definitely in there. He's he's there all day. Mentor of the Meek, two of. Important card. I set it before. That's your card draw engine. Plus he's just a two 
like two in the front, two two dude, which is not always irrelevant. Uh, Seance is a really good card, like we were talking about. We don't have anything else that interacts with the graveyard, so Seance just runs the graveyard. We've got Planner Cleansing, and I want to be clear: the reason why we have the Elvish Pioneers, which is the worst, it, it is the worst ramp in the format. It's fucking bad. It's bad. It's a bad ramp card. It's not as good as I gotta go all the way over there so you know what I'm just gonna go up here but it is not as good as the other options that we have which would mainly be our little two drop friend here where's that asshole where are you holy shit yeah there he is he's just uh, staring me right if he was a snake he would have bit me um this jackass but the problem is is that he throws away our war storm surges and he throws away our planner cleansings and I can't fish for stuff I don't have black, so I, I can't allow that to happen. To be honest with you, this is not a dredge pile at all. It just has that seance in there to abuse some of the other synergies that we have. So sadly, I need some early game stuff, and it also works with Vengevine, and he will ping people if Warstorm surges out, and you know, you can use him again with seance to ping him again. I mean, I, it's not like he completely doesn't work. It's not like he just, you know, shits off and just does nothing. But he's obviously worse than the Wayfinder, that's for sure. And he makes you a little janky, especially when you have this many slow lands. Uh, it, it's a little scary to, to have that guy in here, but he is a necessary evil. So we do run for him. We are going to bounce back, though, uh, I, because we were talking about the planner cleansing the two of us. We do need a board reset. And, of course, with the Seance, we can win from that, because I was just telling you before how much damage. Like, Inferno Titan in the yard with the Seance out is, is nine damage. Uh, with that Warstorm Surge. So, Planner Cleansing is important. Fling is also super useful with the Seance because we can get something out of the yard, block one of their creatures. If it's a Pelica Worm, we gain seven life, we block a creature, we fling it at them, that's seven damage. If Warstorm Surge is out, then that's 14 damage with seven life gain on us. Uh, this deck is freaking insane. Um, so that four flings for sure. One Inferno Titan, two Warstorm Surges, you know, four Elvish Pioneer we talked about, four Elvish Visionary, we need the card draw. Four Cultivates, do not skip, do not do three Cultivates, guys. Do not, you need four. Uh, he's a big boy, he, Cultivate's important. One Vinge Vine, and then Pelica Worm. This deck is pretty self-explanatory, but it does not play itself. You have to be really careful about how you get your lands and how what hands you keep. And don't always play around the elvish pioneer because sometimes that's going to leave you open to too many attacks so you have to be really careful with your early game but if you're careful in your early game then this thing is going to beat the shit out of your opponent late game for sure uh and to show that we're going to be getting into a game right now because this is the last week we kind of need to pad these videos out a little bit so i'm going to be showing you at least one game right now and then two tomorrow so i will see you guys in a match all right, everybody, let's see what our first hand is. Bad, actually. Not not a good hand. Uh, this is a sad hand. It makes me a sad panda bear. Who goes first? Because I want to know how upset I am with this hand. Oh, dear. This is, this is bad news. Uh, this is better. This is actually this is fine, because I got the board wipe, so I can probably dig out of whatever I need to do. I wonder if I blew right into the microphone there. I had some fucking bullshit on my glasses. We need to fix that. Um, planner cleansing just became less relevant. Except I can't cultivate into it, but I have to use it so early. Wall of Omens just became irrelevant, which is always an issue. Wish it went first. I would be in, in much better shape. But we'll see what happens. I mean, some of these decks that run this Cloudfin Raptor just shit the bed, so... Red, blue, Cloudfin Raptor... Two dudes, that only activates it once. I get the Wall of Omens, so I'm only taking a little bit of damage here. It's just chipping me right now. He's down to four cards in hand, which is always nice for the Planner Cleansing, because that is your reset that allows you to kind of deal with the field. The unfortunate thing is that he's blue, which means that he's going to have every opportunity to draw cards, which is not what we need right now. See, we got plenty of grain. We already have enough grain to uh, utilize our Pelica Worm. And we're going to draw another card. The card draw is very important in this deck. And there is a Pelica Worm, which makes the Planner Cleansing even better of a play. We have stuff that we need to worry about, but we do have the uh, shifts, the one mana shifts in here, which really help us. If this guy's got mana problems, we're going to win this one. Easily. 
It's a low mana red blue aggro build. I don't like this at all. That is a strange that is a strange series of words that I had to put together. Uh, blue red aggro strangeness. I don't know is uh, is a, is a great kind of compilation deck there. It's a lot going on here. He does have a lot of one ones, and if he starts being able to cancel me, I'm gonna be upset. But if he can't, I'm gonna be in pretty good shape. I'm gonna wall of omens. I need one more white source, so I will be using that cultivate. But I'm gonna see what I can grab, and I'm gonna play my slow land. Seance makes me pretty happy because I can reuse these O ones after I burn the world with the planner cleansing. And we just have to hope that this guy uh, continues to tap down his mana. And I'll just take three for a while here, which isn't that big of a deal. I just need to know that I don't have a negate to worry about coming up and I can probably win this because I'll have the Pelica Worm come out shortly thereafter and if he cancels that then we'll go into the seance and be in better shape. There's a chance he negates this cultivate. If he doesn't we can feel see with a weird aggro build like this you almost kind of have to expect that he doesn't have the sources that he would need to do something like that. That's three, four, five, so I can plan or cleanse. With this being aggro is what I'm saying. Uh, you think that he doesn't have negates and stuff like that, but I would be surprised if he didn't put a couple of negates in here just to protect himself against people who outpace him. Or mirror matches of just colors. There is no real mirror match of just this aggro weird thing. Now we're in a bit of trouble. We're in a bit of a pickle here. Well, not really anymore. Because we just got another one. No negate. Didn't even have to worry about it. I'm at 10, but guess what? I'm at 17 next turn. Because he's got no creature counters. There's no creature counter in the format that's one blue. So my advice to this guy would be to put more freaking uh, mana in his pile. A low to the ground aggro red blue deck is so strange to me. You know he's got that one uh, critter, that one little, yeah. You know that asshole is showing up. I'm just going to plan to cleanse again. I don't even give a shit. Don't even give a shit. I could just pelica worm here, but whatever. I don't care. I'm going to punch him with my pelica worm. Oh, that's really juicy. Plan or cleansing. Boom! Two for two. Playing him like it's my job. I, I have 14 life in the chamber, thanks to the cloud shift. Just have to be really careful. No, I don't. He, if he lays another blue, I would have to be upset. But no, see this weird aggro strangeness. What is going on? Like, I, all I'm saying that's weird about this is why would you... Because you have, like, artful dodge and stuff, I assume is what he's doing. But, like, I don't know why you would pair red with blue for an aggro build. It just seems really strange to me. But, you know, whatever. To each, to each their own, I suppose. But look, a worm, I just won. Because all the creatures he's had so far are one once. You know, I assume he's got Act of Treason in there, too. You know, that's why he has blue. Because it's sorcery speed. You know, maybe he can do some stuff with that. But I get to just cloud shift. So I don't even care. Warstorm Surge would just end this. But otherwise, it's just going to be a... A struggle in futility as we sit here wait for this guy to try and think his way out of this concrete box it's not even a paper bag it is a box of sadness I can't just use my cloud shift though so I do have to be a little bit careful on that front I'm gonna crash in for seven though and I'll take one for 16 turns and it is my turn again uh, I'll put this down there because I might play that seance just to get my walls out. They'll allow me to draw some cards, allow me to do some action there. Stop some of this uh, damage if he decides to attack with the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's a nice little surprise for him. So there you go, seance. Do your job, seance. Oh, pass turn. Get this 0-4 wall out there so the 1-1 one, one won't attack me. I also get to draw a card. Yes, please. That'll work. Not that I was searching for an answer. Because I think we done answered the question pretty well. 
We done did it. It's done did. What do you got for me? That is a 1-3. Vanilla. Is Blando Calarizian. That's what that is. Tag me for two, man. Touch the sky. Yep. No blocks. I'm blockless. I'm going to attack for seven. Nope. That guy's a defender. He defends. It's like a master of the universe over there. Attack for seven. Just saying, we're just hanging out, man. I don't even know. This guy's trying to get me down to within... Well, yep. I was gonna play the Scroll Guildgate first, but okay. We'll play that 3-4 as well. Why not? And we will get that wall out there too. So that seems sassy. Well, I just won. I'm gonna wait for him to tap down this blue and then I'm just gonna fling... Right at his face. That'll work. Just chuck a pelica worm at you. And that'll do it every time. This tech is so much fun. Oh, shit. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy this deck. I think it'll serve you pretty well in the coming week, even if you don't want to check out the new content. But I, I think it's going to be like $10, $5 to just get the stuff and, and $5 more to unlock it all. But I think unlocking it's going to be half the fun because the single-player campaign sounds cool. But we're going to cover the single-player campaign in two days. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Check back tomorrow because we'll play more of this as well. As always, thank you so much for watching this episode, and I will see all of you guys tomorrow.